Today, we're going to continue taking a look at the Terra world map and uh, draw out a little bit more of where I've currently got everything set. All of the stuff in the west is might be subject to change. So a lot of the stuff in the east is subject to change. I've pretty much solidified everything in the middle, but let's keep going with the western half since that's where we did Tempest and Pestia and all that stuff. So this is the northern tip of Bloor, right? We've talked about that in the previous little segment. And now we're gonna go down the western coastline. So I'm gonna flip this over so I can see. It might be upside down to you, but it's right side up to me. So let's try and get some more of this west coast thing out of the way. We have a sort of peninsula reaching out this way before coming all the way back in on itself. And then it comes back around. I haven't really gotten a full placeholder name for this peninsula. It's not really inhabited. It's pretty mountainous. There's a lot of mountains out here. It's not really habitable, so much to say, but could there be something here? Maybe. This is the more lesser inhabited portion of the Lure uh, continent. And as we keep going in, we're going to keep going inwards and inwards and then into the south, and then we stop here at the thinnest most point. This is the thinnest most um, point, as I to say, right here. As you can see, that's the thinnest most point where the two coastlines meet. And then we spread outwards again. And this is a pretty mountainous region right here, and a mountainous region here. This is a little plain sign. This is a, there is a trading port right here in the middle, where a very eccentric trader by the name of Sherpa holds a sort of emporium, so to speak. Uh, this man, Sherpa, has collected uh, trinkets and items from all across the world, and he has a sort of bazaar, a bizarre bazaar, um, up for sale for a year from traders all over the world come here to collect and trade, even though this seems to be the border of nothingness. For south of this little region here is a continent that is for the most part uninhabited by the nicer peoples of the world. We're gonna draw this out. This out here, come back in, come back out, go back in, go back out, come back in, come back in, out, 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 there, up here. This little region, this is surrounded by mountainous regions on pretty much all sides. Nobody can really get in here. There's no coastlines, there's no beaches, there's no... Really, there's no way to get in unless you go south through a pass from Sherpa, and really, it's pretty well guarded. There is a pretty substantial garrison and a gate, a pretty big gate. Uh, G A T E gate. There's a gate here manned by the last garrison, the last garrison of the Lower Kingdom. It's pretty well stocked, considering Sherpa here. He supplies this gate and this garrison. Now, this is what the people of Lure call the Dark Lands. So I'm just gonna call it the Dark Lands, for that is the most simplistic human name. They like using simple names. Now, do the elves have uh, different names for this place? Of course, because a long, long, long time ago, this used to be the ancient lands of the Solari, the Eldari, the Solari Eldari, yeah. And, um, I'm trying to remember which book it was, but if you remember Navars from one of my pre prologue chapters, in one of those, it might either be the first book or the second book, but the chapter involving Navaris, he wakes up somewhere down here in this continent, 
and he ends up being teleported to Helmet, or who cares, I'm not spoiling that part, but he shows up here, there's ruins scattered all about, there is a pyramid located in the center of this continent, there are some ruins over here, some ruins over here, and a eerie little inhabited, strangely, fortress here, we're just gonna try to make a little building here, just a tiny little thing here, and yeah, okay. This little fort, there's a pyramid here, there's a, some ruins scattered throughout, and in the center right here, there is a inhabited dark city, like there's clouds all over the place, there's no, um, there's no sunlight in this portion here, d -d 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 right around here. There's no sunlight here. There seems to be like a mystical dark fog um, enrapturing this place. At all, any and all who come down through here, for this is a one great desert here. All of this from here to here to here to here. Let's just draw the desert. Desert. So all you see within that circle is a big desert, so it's not necessarily easy to get to this little place here. Now, it's kind of greenish, kind of. I wouldn't eat any of the green stuff around this region here. Sorry about that. Alright, so I wouldn't trust any of the green crap around here. It might be poisonous, it might be... It's not necessarily edible green, maybe like some reeds. Um, but there is not too much sunlight around here. It's all black and cloudy. But there is an inhabited fortress here in the Dark Lands here that even those who are in Sherpa in the dead of night when the wind is still, occasionally when there is no moon in the sky, you might hear a roar coming from the south. We don't necessarily know what roar it belongs to, who this roar emits from, but we can probably guess that it comes from this little place right here. And what is this little fortress? What's it called? Um, that's kind of spoilery. We're not going to go into that, but there's where that is. Now, along the coastline, we have pretty much mountainous regions from here, to here, to here, to here, to here, to here. But we have an island off the coast right here. And there is an inhabited uh, city, so to speak, right here. Not necessarily a city, more like a, a port, just like a like an in-between sort of place. Um, for off to the coast, off to the side here, there is a smaller nation, but um, none in Lure dare go to this little island of this. Because it's almost like those who sail near to this big little island may never come back for in a certain tower located right here. If any would be sailing the waters of this region, they would hear a singing coming from this tower. And a mist would start to thicken as the ships near this island. Soon the ships would become lost in the misty waves, and they would never be found again. But they would be drawn towards the singing from this tower that they could see above the clouds, and then they would be drawn in. And if they do dare land upon this mystical place, they would never be heard from again, and they might even find a peril belongs to that lovely singing voice. She never leaves this tower, but none who go to this island ever leave it either. So, who knows? There is a small little settlement here that belongs to the people who have become shipwrecked. And uh, these people are hardy folk. These people are resistant to the singing of the tower on the western side of the island. Now there is, like with this little distance here, that that's a fair amount of distance between here and here. Now, how would I describe that fair distance? How would the... Um, well, as you can see from here to here, right? That's necessarily the distance between the shores from Tempest and the north coast of Lure, right? 
so that's 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 a pretty good distance between here so these guys at least have this side of the island to roam about without being drawn by the mystical magics of this lady and her song but they can't leave but luckily there this land is very fertile with forests and um, animals so they're fine but they can't leave every time they try to build a ship and try to escape the mist thickens, and they cannot escape the barrier surrounding this little island. Will we come here? We might. We just might. Uh, let's talk about this little place here. Now, this is usually the uh, island that people go to to restock on supplies picked up from Sherpa here. Because it's kind of hard to get here from here. From due to the rocky little outcroppings on the side. People normally sail in from this side. They don't necessarily come in from here. So if ships are sailing around this, these waters here, coming from the east over, you know, planet to planet around, you know, so once I get the east side done, you know, that's how it would look, right? So this side, if you go directly from that side, you will come over here and all that, yeah. So if they come in from this side, they would often sail down the coast, avoiding this island, the charts tell you where the mist starts and how to avoid it, so they would come either through here or through here to stop at this land here, this little island here, to get supplies from Sherpa. Now, it's a pretty decent port, I wouldn't say it's the best, but they don't really have a name for it, it's just an extension of Sherpa, really, so maybe they call it the Sherpa Island, who cares. So they do. No, I'll do the eastern half of lore in the next little installment. But we've got a little bit more. We talked about the dark continent a little bit, and we talked about the desert here. We talked about the mystic, mysterious pyramid. This was the pyramid that Devaris found the mysterious shaman upon, and this is where he disappeared into the next segment where you find him later. Um, we've talked about Sherpa, we've talked about the mountainous coast on the western half of Lur. This is the northern coast, we've talked about that, we've talked about Tempest. And then, next time we come back, we're gonna draw the rest of the eastern coast, and then we'll talk about the interior and what's going on in the interior, where the main cities are, where the capital is. We'll talk about all that in the next installment of the Terra World Map. Be imaginative, everybody.